Hello and welcome to this week's Spotlight. My name is Derek and this week we are checking out the Swarovski DS Gen 2. The first DS that came out a couple of years ago was a great scope, but with this, the Gen 2, they really put their mind brains into overdrive. Now, for those who haven't seen this before, what it basically is, is a 5 to 25 by 52 scope with a built-in rangefinder and ballistics computer. To use it, you simply point it at the target that you want to shoot at, hit this top ranging button here, and it'll actually present on the reticle a hold line for both the elevation and a windage suggestion. We will get to that part in just a sec, but first, let's break this down. Again, 525 by 52, and it has a 40 millimeter tube on this example here. We can also get the rail mount one for those who want to shoot one of those with a blazer, sour, even some Mauser rifles. That tube needs to be so big because this is where all of the electronics and all the sensors are located. They did that so that they didn't have to put anything else extra on the outside of the scope like it had a tumor. As far as rings go, we have Contessa, Spur, American Defense Manufacturing, Blazer, and Sauer. As you can see, it's a bit of a large optic at nearly 16 inches long and 38 ounces. It's the same sort of size and weight as a full-on tactical scope, uh, but it makes long-range shooting, especially when hunting, so much easier. Now, to get started, you'll want to download the Swarovski Ballistic app on your phone or tablet. When you do so, let it have access to the Bluetooth, and then you can start to really put your ballistical stuff into this. With that, I do want to mention something on BC, which is the ballistic coefficient, basically how efficient that bullet's going to fly through the air. So the higher the number, the more efficient it flies. Now there's two models that are primarily used for this sort of thing. You have uh, G1, which is, which is based off of a flat-based bullet, or you have G7, which is a better model for your sort of match grade sort of boat tail bullet. So we see a lot of hunting bullets out there that fall into that category. One more tip on BC is that if you're using the app and it gives you an example of one that is obtained by Brian Litz, I do suggest going with that one because he can usually get a more realistic number for that component. Um, that's not to say that the bullet manufacturers lie to you when they give you the BC. It's just a matter of how they obtain that figure. Uh, primarily that's what velocity do they ascertain that BC from. Uh, a perfect example is, let's say you shoot 6.5 Creedmoor. A uh, one bullet manufacturer might give you a certain BC, but that only applies to velocities that a Creedmoor is not capable of. But a hotter round like a 6.5 PRC or 28 Nosler is. So you, you want to be a little bit careful, do a little bit of homework on that to make sure that the BC figure that you enter into this scope is going to be relevant to the caliber that you shoot. So once you enter all your data into the app, you just hit a button at the bottom of the screen and sync that to the scope. And once that's done, you don't need your phone. You can leave it at home. You don't need, the scope doesn't talk to it while it's doing its job. So once the data is uploaded here, um, you're good. Just leave the phone at home, just use this. Now, it will also give you two wind holds. Now, it doesn't sense the wind, but it'll give you an example of uh, two different wind figures for that round at that shot. So for example, if you see the winds are variable between five and 10 miles an hour, you can set it on the app. That way, it'll give you what a five and 10 mile an hour wind hold would look like with that. So you can go down to things like uh, two to four or four to six and then up to about 20 or so. Now the uh, the two holds will always be, um, the second hold is gonna be twice what the first one is. So you're gonna have uh, five and 10, uh, 10 and 20, for example. Now beyond that, we do start to see some of the new features that are found on the Gen 2. First among which are when you are making your distance reading, it'll tell you not only the range and the hold and the windage and all that, it'll also have the ability to show you the, the impact velocity of the bullet, the impact energy, as far as, uh, I, think they, I think they use joules or foot pounds, and the time of flight. Now those first two are really critical because with long range hunting, you wanna make sure that your bullet has enough power at the target to do what it's supposed to. So if, uh, if you know that your bullet is really gonna do its job of penetrating and expanding as it should, but let's say it needs to hit at a velocity of 
I don't know, 1600 feet per second or more, you'll be able to see where that is. It also has a built-in level. So when you're shooting, if the scope is canted like this, it'll show you in the display that it's canted. And when you level it up, it'll tell you when you're perfect. And we now have a few different reticles to choose from. So you can really go into the app and you can see them all right there on the app and you can send, send one to the scope itself. And that way, when you hit the ranging button, it'll show that one as your hold point. Now the app will let you zero between 10 and 900 meters. That's 11 to 984 yards because the metric system. To zero the optic, you will need a few things and they are stored up here in what would have been the elevation turret on a normal scope. First, you will need this little sort of Torx piece here because the way that you actually mechanically zero the optic is unlike any other scope. You have these little panels right here. You simply use this screw to take these off. That comes off and then there's your quarter minute elevation turret. It has a weird little gear shape to it, but that's why you have this little piece here. It is geared on the inside like that. That way you just simply place it on here and you can make your clicks. Normally though, I would say that the best range to zero something like this is gonna be around one or 200 yards. You wanna make sure that your zero is well established because uh, if your zero is off by a little bit, that will impact how the scope will shoot at a further distance. So if you're putting this on a typical hunting rifle, which has a relatively thin-ish barrel, I would say take a shot, wait a few minutes, let that thing cool off, and then take a, another shot and just do that. That way your first shot is a cold bore shot because in hunting, that's what they all are anyway. So, but yeah, with that, get a good zero. At this point, you are ready to go. Uh, what you would do is you would point it at the target. You'd hit this top button right here and it'll give you the range. It'll give you that display as far as where the shot's gonna be. And it'll do that first by calculating the drop, the atmospherics like temperature and pressure and that sort of thing and the angle that you're shooting at as well. One quick little mention here, your main range button is right here. You also see these plus and minus buttons. These are for your display brightness. So it's pretty easy to adjust it on the fly should you need to. As far as the distances that this can get to, it'll range up to 1500 yards, but it will give you a firing solution out to 1100. One thing that I am thankful for on this is that uh, when you change the magnification, the hold point will move relative to that. I wouldn't go so far as to call it first focal plane as such, but the way that the hold reacts to the magnification, it reacts in the same way that a first focal plane scope would. So it doesn't matter what power you're on, when it gives you that hold point, that's the right one. Now at high power, the scope would only be able to give you a hold point to a certain distance, and that's where the reticle would go below your field of view, but it'll show you that in the app. I think on the 308 load that I tested on it, that was about 650 yards or so, but that's not a big deal. You just uh, zoom it out a little bit and, and you'll be fine because the glass on this is, it's a Swarovski, so I mean, damn, it's fantastic. So you don't need 25 power all the time to make shots, even at 1100 yards. Now, as with many ballistic programs, you are able to true this. And what I mean by that is, if you're getting sighted in at the range and you know that all your data is as accurate as you know it, and it's still missing a little bit, let's just call it I don't know, a, f a foot low at 500 yards. You would be able to go into the app and tell it how far you're off at a certain distance and, and it will correct that not only for that distance, but also for the whole arc of the bullet. Now there's two ways to go about that. But first I do want to say, make sure that your rifle, your ammo, and you are on point with this stuff. Because if your ammo's not the quality that it needs to be, or if you're having a bad day and you're not shooting as well as you could, or your rifle's not up to the task of the accuracy needed for this sort of thing, you're going to be chasing your tail, chasing a problem that doesn't exist. But if you're confident that your rifle, ammo, and you are shooting really well, 
and we can carry on. First method is the one I just kind of mentioned there. You get a good zero and then shoot this out to a distance of around a maximum of 547 yards, that's 500 meters. So the farther you can get to that point is good because you want as far a data spread as you can get. So if you want to use 500 yards, that's fine. But uh, basically what you would do is you'd make your group, then you'd measure that relative to where your bullseye was and you can tell the app, hey, I was eight inches low at this distance and it will correct its own brain so that it'll bring that shot up and, and make any corrections on that, that bullet's flight path. Second method is to just tweak the ballistic coefficient on that. Now, if you know your velocity, and I really think you should get, either buy or borrow a friend's chronograph to get your bullet velocity, the BC can be tweaked a little bit beyond the figure that you got to make sure that it'll work. Now with that, if you are shooting high, you would need to raise your BC. If you're shooting low, you would need to lower your BC. Now you don't need to make drastic numbers, just small little adjustments here and there. Like don't go, don't go changing it to the nearest tenth, maybe, maybe change to the nearest uh, hundredth or even thousandth, depending on how far off you are. No matter what ballistic testing that you want to do with it, or your truing method, if you will, I would set aside a good bit of ammo for it, because you want to be absolutely sure that you're getting good data before you start thinking about taking an animal at these distances that this thing can achieve. So to do that, you don't need an absolute boatload of ammo, but I mean, I'd say at least do at least five round groups on cold bore shots if you can. It's going to take a while, but it's well worth it. Take your time. Uh, the bigger the sample size, the better, so that way you can be absolutely sure that you know where the center of that group is at a distance, and that way you, you can be confident that you set up the scope properly. Overall, this is Swarovski at their absolute best. It is a fantastic scope. Uh, yes, it's big, it's heavy, and it's not cheap, but look at it this way. This one scope can replace two or even three pieces that you would otherwise need to do the same task. So on a hunt, even if you, even if you can shave one piece of equipment down, that is nice. I'll tell you what I, I do like about this scope the most though, is let's say you live in Florida where it's low altitude, hot and humid. And then let's say you go up to Colorado or somewhere else in the, 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 the center part of the country or the Northwest, whatever, totally different ball game when it comes to atmospherics. You don't, you don't have any data for that atmosphere because you've never been there before. But you can zero in Florida and just go to Colorado or wherever, and this will actually sense all that and take care of all that guesswork for you. So even if you are someone who has done much long range shooting with uh, other types of optics in the more traditional sense, it is nice that this can take out that guesswork for you. Nothing's really as fast as this as far as seeing the target, ranging it, and getting a shot off. Where on different sort of situations, you would have your range finder, maybe that has ballistics built into it. Okay, yeah, fair and good. Then you would take that and you would mess with your scope and all that. But uh, something like this, I did some shooting with it a few months ago, and you could really be on target, hit the laser, have the hold, and have a shot off in five seconds if you're really, really good about it. So the, uh, the time it takes to deploy this is very short. And that's something that you can do all by yourself. You don't need to have someone with a range finder with the ballistics uh, giving you this information. You can be on the target yourself, hit the button, it'll give you the range, and you can get a shot off pretty much in that time that I just did it if you're really quick about it. So that'll wrap up this beauty. We will leave a link down below where you can find it on our website. In the comments, let us know if you're a fan of a scope like this. We really wanna try and get our, our uh, finger on that pulse. Also, we will be giving away one of these t-shirts here. So to qualify, just have a YouTube account, comment below, and we'll pick a winner. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram, and we'll see you next time.